Okay, here we've got sort of a classic shadow problem. And we're given a man standing in front of a light beam on a wall. And we're tasked with finding the length of his shadow that's cast by the light. And we're given three things. We're given the distance that he is from the wall with the light on it. We're given the height of the wall, how far the light is from the ground. And we're given the angle that the light beam makes with his head. And we've got to figure out some way to figure out this length right here. I'm going to call this length L for his shadow. So there's two things to recognize here. Um, the first one is that we're dealing with similar triangles. Now you might have encountered similar triangles before. And there are a number of criteria to determine if we have similar triangles. In this case, we have similar triangles because two angles shared are the same. Uh, here's what I'm talking about. We have one triangle, the big one right here, and we have another smaller triangle right here. And they share this angle right here, and they also share this right angle right here and right here. So we can say that the sides are proportional and the angles are the same on these triangles. So using that relationship, we can set up um, some equations that we can use to solve for the length of the man's shadow. So let's start. Um, first, I'm going to draw out my triangles, like this right here. And don't worry, the trig will, will come soon enough. And here's one triangle. This is a length of 40. This is a length of 15. And this is plus L. And we have our second triangle right here. This is the small one. And this is a length of L right here. And that's really, for now, all we know about it. I'm going to call this right here H for height. This is like going to be the height of our man. Now, we do know something. We know that this angle right here is 135 degrees. So since this entire thing has to add up to 180, I know that this right here has to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to put 45 degrees right here. Now, let's start doing some similar triangle stuff. Since the sides are proportional, we can say that 40 over H is equal to this right here, 15 plus L over L. Okay, well, we have one relationship. We have one equation with two unknowns, but we've got to figure out something else to solve this. We've got to figure out another way to relate L and H to each other. And there's where the trig comes in. We know that this angle is 45 degrees, so we can set up a relationship between L and H. If we remember tangent, by definition, is opposites over adjacent, then we can say that for our second equation, the tangent of this angle, 45, is equal to opposite L over adjacent H. And now we have everything that we need to solve this. Now, if we plug in tangent of 45 into our calculator, we're going to see that it is in fact 1. So we can see that Going from that, L over H, this equals 1. L over H equals 1. So that means that L equals H. And you can see that here because anything divided by itself has to equal 1. Or I can write this as a fraction over 1 and then cross multiply like this and like this. And you're going to get L to equal H. Okay. Now that I have L equaling H, I can substitute that back in for this equation right here. Let's do that up here. So I have 40, and I'm going to substitute in um, L. 
I'll substitute an L because we only have one H here. We have 40 over L equals 15 plus L over L. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply like this. So I'm going to get 40L is equal to L times 15 plus L. Now, I have L as a common factor on both sides, so I can cancel that out by dividing by L. Then I get 40 equals 15 plus L. Moving the 15 over to the other side, I'm going to get 25 equals L. And there's our solution right here. Now, this solution makes a lot of sense. Because remember, L equals H. And since L equals H, we know that H must also be 25. Well, this is interesting because our relationship that we set up between L and H, the tangent of 45, tangent of 45 equals 1. So that means L divided by H has to equal 1. What's 25 divided by 25? That is, of course, 1. And again, if we look at properties of triangles, this makes sense too. This is a 45 degree angle right here. And because this is 90, and all the angles have to add up to 180, this must be 45 as well. And we have something called an isosceles triangle. Now, if you remember your properties of triangles, whenever you have an isosceles triangle, two sides of the triangle are going to be equal to each other. These two sides of the these two sides of the triangle right here, because this is isosceles, these two sides are equal to each other, and this side, the hypotenuse, is of course not. So our answer makes very good sense just by properties of triangles that we use, and of course our trig identity. So that is how to solve the triangle problem in trig.